Cari fratelli e sorelle, buongiorno. Dear brothers and sisters, good morning. On the itinerary for the Catechesis on Prayer, today we meet King David, favored by God even from his youth. He is chosen for a unique mission that would play a central role in the history of the people of God and in our own faith. In the Gospels, Jesus is called Son of David a number of times. Like him, in fact, he is born in Bethlehem. According to the promises, the Messiah would come from the descendants of David, a king completely after God's heart, in perfect obedience to the Father, whose action faithfully realizes his plan of salvation. David's story begins on the hills surrounding Bethlehem, where he grazes the flock of his father, Jesse. He is still a boy, the last of many brothers. So much so that when the prophet Samuel, acting on God's order, goes in search of the new king, it almost seems that his father has forgotten about his youngest son. He worked in the open air. We can think of him as a friend of the wind, of the sounds of nature, of the sun's rays. He has only one companion to comfort his soul, his harp. And during those long days spent in solitude, he loves to play and to sing to his God. He also played with the, the, the sling, the, the slingshot. David is therefore, first of all, a shepherd, a man who takes care of animals, who defends them from oncoming danger, who provides for their sustenance. When, by God's will, David will have to care for his people, the things he will do will not be very different. This is why the image of the shepherd frequently occurs in the Bible. Even Jesus defined himself as the good shepherd, whose behavior is different than that of the mercenary. He offers his life on behalf of the sheep. He guides them. He knows each one by name. David had learned a lot from his previous job. So, when the prophet Nathan reproves him for his very serious sin, David understands right away that he had been a bad shepherd, that he had despoiled another man of his only sheep that he loved, that he was no longer a humble servant, but a man who was crazy for power, a poacher, who looted and preyed on others. A second characteristic trait present in David's vocation is his poet's soul. From this small observation, we can deduce that David was not a vulgar man, as is often the case with individuals who are forced to live for long periods in isolation from society. He is instead a sensitive person who loves music and singing. His harp would accompany him always, sometimes to raise a hymn of joy to God, other times to express a lament or to confess his own sin. The world that presented itself before his eyes was not a silent scene. As things unraveled before his eyes, he observed a greater mystery. That is exactly where prayer arises, from the conviction that life is not something that takes us by surprise, but a stupefying mystery that inspires poetry, music, gratitude, praise, even lament and supplication in us. When a person lacks this poetic dimension, let's say, 
lacks poetry, his soul limps. Thus, tradition has it that David is the great artist behind the composition of the Psalms. Many of them at the beginning bear an explicit reference to the King of Israel and to some of the more or less noble events of his life. David, therefore, has a dream, that of being a good shepherd. Sometimes he will live up to that task, other times less so. What is important, however, in the context of the history of salvation is that he is a prophecy of another king whom he merely announces and prefigures. Let's look at David. Let's think about David. Holy and sinful, persecuted and persecutor, victim and even a murderer. Aren't these contradictions? David was all of this, all together. And we, too, have recorded events in our lives that are often opposed to each other. In the drama of life, all people often sin because of inconsistency. There is one single golden thread running through David's life and that gave unity to everything that happened, his prayer. That is the voice that was never extinguished. The holy David prayed, the sinner David prayed, the persecuted David prayed, the persecutor David prayed, the victim David prayed, and the murderer David prayed. This is the golden thread running throughout his life. He was a man of prayer. That is the voice that was never extinguished. Whether it assumed tones of jubilation or lament, it is always the same prayer. It is only the melody that changes. In so doing, David teaches us to let everything enter into dialogue with God, joy as well as guilt, love as well as suffering, friendship as much as sickness, everything can become a word spoken to the you who always listens to us. David, who knew solitude, was in reality never alone. In the end, this is the power of prayer in all those who make space for it in their lives. Prayer is what gives you nobility. And David was noble because he prayed. He was a, nurber, he was a murderer who prayed, who repented. And his nobility is given back to him through prayer. Prayer gives us nobility. Prayer is capable of securing our relationship with God, who is the true companion on the journey of every man or woman. Good or bad, always prayer. Thank you, Lord. I have, I'm afraid, Lord. Help me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. And David's confidence was so great that when he was persecuted and he had to escape, he didn't allow anyone to defend him. If the Lord humiliates me this way, he knows because the nobility of prayer leaves us in God's hands, those hands who are folded, folded in love, the only hands, the only secure hands that we have. <laughs>